absolutely beautiful estuary and a beautiful springtime morning. And we're back in the kayak and chasing some big flatty dogs. We'll roll the intro, we'll go over the game plan and see if we can start getting it. Okay, so if you're a new viewer, the aim of the game is to catch some fish, but also try and pass on as much info as possible. If you're impatient and want to get to some fishing action, you can find the timestamps down in the description as well as the gear that I'm using. But first we'll go over the game plan and where we are is a bloody beautiful little far south coast estuary that we used to be able to get the tinnies in with a bit of hard work but it is now basically uh, kayaks only just because it's become so filled up with sand. And while it is pretty wide in parts, I think the deepest it would go would be two and a half, three meters. This is probably the deepest right here down near the mouth and it is open. So with that in mind, hopefully the game plan for today is just going to revolve around swapping these two lures out so over here we've got a die with double clutch 95 mil and that's going to be for the deeper sections kind of that meter and a half plus and then in the shallow stuff going to be throwing up a 130 mil osp bent minnow that's the game plan we'll see if we uh how that goes for us i do have some other things to throw as well but fingers crossed, these two lures are going to be the ones that are going to do the damage. So yeah, very shallow, this whole basin. This is pretty deep here next to the drop off, but up the back there, that's like a metre, 50 centimetres. It absolutely looks golden for big flatties. Fingers crossed they're um, shaking out of their uh, winter chill out and are on the hunt for some food and out in this sun and warming up and stuff. So. That's gonna be it. I think first off, oh, what we've also got is the end of the rising tide. So I think uh, this afternoon, once it changes and that water starts coming back out, that's when it's really gonna be firing. I really like my flathead, especially up in the shallow stuff on the um, falling tide. So it's just, I'm absolutely frothing because it's perfect conditions. We've got an easterly wind is going to be giving us huge, big, long casts up onto the flats and then bring it back with that tide with the flathead are gonna be sitting with their heads, waiting for stuff to come across the top, bang. We're on, I'm excited. Um, but with it being the incoming tide still, I think what I'm gonna do is just chuck on the double clutch and just fish the drop off here, see if there's any fish trying to pick off, um, any flathead trying to pick off bait fish just coming into the river. So we'll see how that goes. So jerk baiting for flathead is something we've done before on the channel, but I will just go over the technique and there's many jerk baits that work really well, but the old double clutch is nearly the goat. But what we're just going to be doing is a couple of uh, flicks down with the rod tip or flicks up if you find that you're hitting the sand or want to keep it above some weed, but you're just going to give it that twitch, twitch, pause, one twitch, two twitches, three twitches, however many you want. And that's what they like. That erratic dart and then a nice pause, they'll smash it just as that lures in between twitches. So yeah, I think the Savo on this outgoing tide is going to be amazing, but you never know, we might be able to pick up a flatty just in this broken weed here. Got one. 
Here is our first one. Oh, dropped him. There he is. He would have only been about a mid 40s fish, but there you go. He was sitting in this shallow pocket over here, I guess picking off bait fish, coming in with the last of the tide. Could have been good to have a look at him, but there you go. They're around. We're on. Oh, that was one. That was one. Oh no, what have we got here? Taylor. A little chopper Taylor. So last time I was up here, which was in the uh, harder winter, I was fishing with soft plastics and it actually was just losing plastic after plastic to these guys. I'd say the tailor that were uh, taking the plastics on me were much bigger though. They were just engulfing a four inch plastic in one go. But that's part of the reason why I'm staying away from plastics today as well. Because I was sick of losing them. Hopefully they're not too much of a nuisance today. There you go, little Taylor. So I only got the one flatty over against the mouth there. I guess uh, the tide should be turning right about now. And we're starting to drift up into some shallower stuff. So if I was throwing the double clutch, um, if this was all sand, it'd be fine. But because there's a bit of weed there, I'm just going to get fouled up a lot. So time to change lures. Going to go over to the bent minnow. But um, a couple episodes ago in the squid one, I believe, I kind of mentioned that I'd been using the mustard fast hatch for most of my lure fishing. So I just thought I'd kind of expand on that a little bit and just show how quick and easy it is to change lures. And just allows you to go through your lures much quicker. You're not eating through your um, leader. You're uh, gonna be changing lures more often, which is gonna allow you to fish different terrains and try different lures and all that, so and I haven't really had any issues with these fast hatches at all. Now I'm not sponsored by mustard fast hatch or anything like that, but I think they're pretty cool bits of kit. Um, a while ago I would have been scoffing at them going, oh, you just tie it, retie your line, tie a new lure on. But really when it comes down to it, it makes changing lures so much easier. I don't think the fish care at all. Have a look at the size of the trebles and that. They're not gonna care about that as well as these bent minnows, they come with a clip on the front as well, anyways. And then all your divers and that kind of thing, they'll have a split ring. But I just take the split rings off using little split ring tweezers or pliers and go on the fast hatch straight to them. So they still get excellent action and just able to change out lures very quickly. Anyways, just thought I'd touch on them very quickly. I think they are really a pretty cool bit of kit. Haven't had any issues with them. These are the um, size one, which go to 25 pounds. They go down to size zero, which is 15 pound strength. And those are the ones I use for brim and whiting and that kind of thing. But for flathead, I go these size one, 25 pounders. Anyways, over the shallow stuff, gonna start flicking the bent minnow. See if we can get a bit of action. I think being right up at the top of the tide, we might get our best action or what I might aim for is heading over to the very shallow stuff and around the edges of the river here. See if we can find a big croc up in the shallows, warming up, waiting for a feed. Yes. Yeah, oh, that was a very good flatty. 
and he was so um, slow with picking it up, I kind of thought, oh, geez, that's weeds coming out of nowhere. And that, that was a flatty. Oh, there you go. Probably could have uh, set the hook just a little bit harder there, but anyways, that is promising. Yeah, got him. Second cast. Surely it's not the same one. Oh, did I drop it? No, I got him. I've got him. Got him. He's only a little fella. There you go. We are on here, boys. I just absolutely had the feeling that this place was going to go off for some top water and shallow flatty fishing. That first one was a bit better, but he ain't too bad either. I think we've got him a bit lassoed here. There you go, two fish in two casts. Dropped the first one, but straight away onto another one. This is gonna go off. So there we go. Ooh, don't hook me. Nice, uh, you'd be getting up to about 50 or so. And the 130 bent minnow, you beauty. He goes. I think we're going to get a quite nice flatty here. Just double checking my leader. Did have him lassoed up. It's kind of a little bit crinkled but not frayed. Yeah, I think that's still pretty good. Right, well, we'll keep the camera rolling, see if we can get Three from three hits. Not so lucky. But may as well go over the technique. So if you've never used a bent video before, they're a pretty cool bit of kit. So they're a slow floating lure, but with a couple twitches, they'll either skid across the top, or what I prefer is to get that rod tip low and get them darting beneath the surface. So they'll just go dart, 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 and then a slow, slower float to the surface. I think there's... Is there a flatty on that? No. Ah, uh, it's a little, uh... Oh! They just wet a f***ing donkey. There's the big cloud he just puffed up. Damn. But there was just, uh, some mullet checking out the... the bent minnow I was distracted by. There you go. That was a nice one. So they're certainly up on this flat, hanging out. Oh. Well, there was another one. I don't think he's coming back. I ripped into him, he just, uh, out. There was just a huge one right there. <sighs> Holy moly, there is some big flatties in here. 
Man, well, we've kind of been flicking for another half hour without any action since probably the last clip I've got there. And then that dropped one and then spooked an absolute donkey. I was thinking about changing over to the uh, double clutch, which we will in a sec, because it deepens out. But um, just for this last little 50 meters or so, 100 meters, we'll keep the bent minnow on. Man. <laughs> that one I stung, I just could just make him out under the surface. The lure hadn't come fully to the, su to the surface. And he came and whacked it, just saw the lure getting tossed around and could make out the flatty. Yep. Yeah, got one. Not a massive one unless he decides to wake up. Actually, it is a massive one. It is a massive one. So that was second cast. Get away from that weed. Oh no. So that was, get away from that whatever that is. I think that's actually a bit of timber. But this is a second cast after changing back to the double clutch. Hopefully this is a sign of a cracking session and this is not a bad fish at all. Hopefully he's on the outside of the mouth. Have a look at that thing. Holy moly. Oh, he's found that weed. Get it out of it, you dog. Yeah, he's free. Oh my goodness, that's a fat flatty. Oh man, and he is on the outside of the mouth. It's gonna take it very easy here. No need to rush, but have a look at that thing. Oh. Ah, oh, hell yeah. That is a proper flatty dog. Now, I'm going to have to be patient here. I'm going to get the lip grips into him. I don't want to um, put him in the net. I don't want to A, get all my treble stuck in there. He, he might come off here. He's only got one treble in him. Let's see what I can make happen here. Sorry if you can't see much here, guys, but I am concentrating. Now, I need you to just open your mouth, come a little bit closer. Just, that's it, keep your mouth open and come a little bit closer. And we've got him. And we've got him. Woo -wee! That is a very nice flatty. Now I am just going to, A, get the hooks out of him and then keep him in the water. We're gonna tow him over to some land. We'll have a proper look at this fish because he is an absolute beauty. There we go, guys. 77 centimetres of flatty there. Not the longest, but my God, is she a thick fish. Absolutely beautiful. Anyways, I've basically had her in the water the whole time, just on a tether. So I think she's gonna swim off Beautifully. She's just chilling there for the moment, but she is free to go whenever she wants. Let's give her a little push off and away she goes. Thanks for playing. Well, there you go. The good old double clutch does it again. That was second cast from changing over from the bent minnow. And look, I think we're going to keep it on and just keep working down along this bank. But um, just check the leader. There is a tiny, tiny fray here down near the lure. But I'm going to snip that off and retire because the size of some of the fish we're seeing in here 
it'd be heartbreaking to have it all go wrong because you don't take two minutes or a minute to um, retie a lure. So that's what I'm gonna do. Retie them, keep the double clutch on. I guess just while I do that, we'll quickly go over the setup. So the rod is one of the Atomic Arrows. This is the medium estuary, I believe. So it is six to 14 pound, and I think they're pretty unreal rods, the old Atomic Arrows. And then what I've got that matched up with is a 2500 size Stratic, 10 pound braid, and I'm using 12 pound leader. And look, I think 12 pound, it isn't uh, undergunned for these big fish, especially when using hard body lures, because you tend to hook them on the outside of the mouth. If I was using soft plastics, I'd probably go up to about 16 pound because they just tend to engulf them whole. And you want to have that uh, abrasion resistance against their teeth. Anyway, finish trying this, we'll get flicking. Oh, Flatty or Taylor? Taylor? Or a good Flatty that came back for it. With how heavy this is, I think we've got a Flatty. And it may be another very good one. Nah, we got a Taylor. Taylor that's just cruising. Or is it a salmon? Yeah, I think we've actually managed to get a salmon in here. There you go. Oh no, it's a uh, very good sized tailor. So I think as I was saying before, last time I was up here, I was fishing soft plastics and particularly in this spot, I was just losing plastic after plastic because these big tailor were just swallowing them whole chopping me off so we're using the uh, the hard body I've got him on the outside of the mouth I've actually just got him in the side he's come up and swiped it uh, what do I want to do here I don't want to lift him and risk losing the lure we might just see he's a good sized tailor he's a pretty good tailor have a look at that one but I might just see if I can keep him over the side of the yak and just use the pliers to get the hooks out. That would be heartbreaking to have the double clutch go to a bloody tailor after we just got that really nice fish on it. There he goes. I was trying to get the lip grips into him, but he was being a pain in the ass. Anyways, trebles are looking good. I might uh, ditch from casting out in the middle there, even though it's the right depth for the double clutch. Because I do not want to lose it to a tailor. Yep, there's one. Is it? Must be a little one. Yeah. Just a little one. That's still a flatty. And when I say little, he looked, he's probably about 50. He's just pales in comparison to that last one and some of the ones we've been seeing around. But he ain't bad at all. So I have been mixing it up, throwing um, the bent minnow up into the shallows there. But I haven't had any luck and been, been spooking um, been spooking fish as well that I've been fishing over with it, so I don't think they're really in the mood for the bent. It's the double clutches doing the damage. We'll get this guy and give you a look.
there you go. Nice little flatty, about 50 or so. But yeah, the uh, a jerk bait has got to be the most, I think one of the most enticing baits to a flatty. I think, in my opinion, it out, outfishes um, surface and soft plastics. But it's about having a diver that's going to work that depth for the water you have in front of you. So luckily today with this place here, these double clutches are perfect for a lot of this part, a lot of this river. So yeah, if you haven't tried jerk baiting for a flathead, it is very, very lethal for them. It's just about finding the right depth for the lures you have or buying lures that are going to suit your your uh, waters. Again, he's just chafed up the leader a little bit, so just going to snip off 10 centimetres. So we've just come over to that first flat where we had a bit of action on the bent minnow. And I just figure it's been a good hour and a half since we've hit it up, so I think the fish will have moved back in, into the area. And we probably could go find some deeper water and keep flicking around the, um, the double clutch. But I just want to get a big blow up on a surface lure. So this is what we're going to stick to. Probably fish over this flat a bit and then do a drift with a wind all the way back across the uh, bay. We just know there was fish here earlier. There's still plenty of water. So we'll give it a flick. Slow to strike. I just, I wasn't sure if the flatty had it. And I just wanted to make sure I didn't yank it out of the zone, but he had it. Let's see if he comes back. He was only a little fella. Got one. Got one. He's only a very little fella, but got one. Well, not, not very little. But he's not the size we're after. And unfortunately, he took that under the surface. Um, I didn't even feel him bite then. Just went to do another twitch and had him on. We'll give you a very quick look. There we go. Nice little eating size flatty. Put him back over the side. Use the pliers, get these hooks out. And off he goes. Oh, his belly up. There you go. Check the leader. She's all good. Back out there. The hell is this? What do I have here? This is a flatty. I've got a little tailor over in the shallows. Yeah, jagged a little. No, a mullet. Oh, baby. Look at that for a big flatty lolly. Oh, sorry, fella. That has got jumbo flatty. Oh, Dewey. Getting all over him. Well, spent a fair while flicking across that flat with the bent minnow, got a couple. But uh, definitely spooked more than I caught. So, gonna start um, making my way back up to the car, I reckon, but just figure I'll fish on the way back. I'm gonna be throwing probably the double clutch the whole time. Just 
just come back down to the front here where it's a bit deeper and just see if there's any fish schooled up here then just start hitting the uh, deeper sections going up Well, I don't think it's a, it's a uh, flathead. I think we've got a, another tailor. I believe. Yeah. Another good sized tailor. So, he's hooked well on the outside of the mouth, so that's good. We won't lose our double clutch. There's a huge school of tailor in here actually. There you go. Not a bad tailor. Yeah, another tailor. There's absolutely stacks of them in here. I don't think you'll be able to see it on the camera, but they're all whizzing past under the kayak. Heaps and heaps, so yeah, we might have to get well clear of this area. Yes, got one. Got one on the bent. I lied. I said I'd uh, probably fish the double clutch all the way back. But it started getting a bit shallow in here, so. Got another one on the bent. He's not a bad one. Not a bad one at all. Yeah, beauty. Another So I guess um, when it comes down to it, they've got very similar retrieves. The old bent minnow you know, and the um, double clutch. I will say that I do sometimes like slowing down the bent minnow. The uh, slowing down how quickly I do the twitches, but a lot of the time, just doing them that fast twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause, as I do as the double clutch does the trick. It's not a bad one. <sighs> Up in the real muddy stuff. So, yeah, I don't want to do this yet. Well, up, well, up. Let's get the lip grips on him. Calm down. Open your mouth. Ah, there we go. So, oh, I need to turn around and get him in the sun a bit. There we go. Another, another little lizard on the bent. He was in the very shallow stuff. It's only about, yeah, max of 30 centimeters here as well. And I guess if I hung, hang around for a little bit longer, they might become a bit more keen to eat off the surface as this light light fades but I've had a rip a day time to pack it in I'll keep fishing back but he very well could be the last fish see ya well there you go legends that's been a pretty fun session plenty of fish one good one which I set out to get a good fish so I'm pretty stoked but spooked a lot of good ones and a lot of fish as well. So we'll definitely be back up here trying some different stuff on them.
anyways i hope you've enjoyed if you have a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated if you got any questions put them down in the comments and i'll get back to you um also there'll be links to the gear in the description from the legends at bossy outdoor and if you haven't tried the mustard fast hatch clips before i highly recommend it just allows you to change out lures very easily and um yeah you can adapt to what's in front of you very quickly okay see you legends